leaders, people who believe climate change is not happening in any meaningful way, are sometimes painted in the media as fringe characters, as kooks. So this might shock you. A man who co-founded the Weather Channel thinks climate change is a hoax. His name is John Coleman. Hello to all your viewers. I resent you calling me a denier. That is a, a word meant to put me down. I'm a skeptic about climate change. And I want to make it darn clear, Mr. Kenny's not a scientist. I am. He's the CEO of the Weather Channel now. I was the founder of the Weather Channel, not the co-founder. And I'm glad you did, because I am addicted to the Weather Channel. I watch a no, lot I'm of cable news. Now. Hold on just oh. a minute. I'm not done. And CNN has taken a very strong position on global warming that is that it is a consensus. Well, there is no consensus in science. Science isn't a vote. Science is about facts. And if you get down to the hard, cold facts, uh, there's no question about it. Climate change is not happening. There is no significant man-made global warming now. There hasn't been any in the past, and there's no reason to expect any in the future. There's a whole lot of baloney, and yes, it is. it has become a big political point of the Democratic Party and part of their platform, and I regret it's become political instead of scientific. But the science is on my side. I don't think we're going to have a conclusion about the topic right here. What I do want to well, know is when not, you because see... you wouldn't the... allow it to happen on CNN. But I'm happy well, that I got on the air and got a chance to talk to your, uh, to your viewers. Hello, everybody. What there I is do... no global warming. What I do wonder is when you see the government, when you see NASA, when you see other institutions say that 97% of climate scientists agree, do you think they're making it up? I, I, what I don't understand is how you well, swear that. Well, that's a figure. Let me explain it to you. Uh, this, the uh, government puts out about two and a half billion dollars directly for climate research every year. It only gives that money to scientists who will produce scientific results that support the global warming hypothesis of the Democrat Party in position. So they don't have any choice. If you're going to get the money, you've got to support their position. Therefore, 97% of the scientific reports published support global warming. Why? Because those are the ones the government pays for, and that's where the money is. It's real simple, but that doesn't mean it's right. That doesn't make it true. That only makes it bought and paid for. The money goes in search of more bizarre. Congressman Marjorie Taylor Greene and Congresswoman Georgia is now saying the federal government is literally controlling the weather. We're controlling the weather. It's beyond ridiculous. It's got to stop. This is a ridiculous claim on its face, and it's so easily disprovable, Nataj, of people openly discussing it for decades now. The foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer, and ultimately to control the weather, and he who controls the weather will control the world. The Air Force has uh, gotten great value out of harp in the past. Oh, yeah. We took over from the Navy and managed it, and actually did a number of uh, experiment campaigns up there, and... Uh, have finished our, our work that we are interested in doing up there. We've uh, moving on to other ways of uh, managing the ionosphere, which the HARP was really designed to do, was to inject energy into the ionosphere and be able to actually control it. Another example is the array of technologies, often referred to collectively as geoengineering, that potentially could help reverse the warming effects of global climate change. One that has gained my personal attention is stratospheric aerosol injection. Well, instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. Or declassified documents that talk about it, but simply by our nation's own laws, such as Public Law 94-490, otherwise known as the National Weather Modification Policy Act of 1976, which was passed October 13th of that year. The stated purpose of which, in part, is literally, quote, to develop practical methods and devices for weather modification. I mean, that's a law that was passed in this country. It was a program. I'm not even sure why we have to continue arguing about this at this point in 2024. It's not a theory. This isn't a crazy, kooky theory. It's a fact. It's on record. Perhaps Biden made such a provocative, contentious claim publicly just to take the focus away, even if briefly, from the growing tide of discontent. And ridiculous. It's got to stop. Findings of cloud seeding. Atmospheric scientists are trying to find out if rain can be brought on prematurely in the clouds of a threatening thunderstorm. If it can, it might also be possible to reduce the destructive lightning discharges at the height of the storm. I want you to stay on the field, please. Give us a field reading. We have personnel wandering around outside. Records are kept of the frequency and types of lightning strokes of seeded and unseeded storms. Statistical analysis will tell if any significant modification has taken place. Investigating the detailed nature.
of such processes is the prelude to the possible control of some of the harmful aspects of the weather. A little over a decade later, the U.S. military conducted experiments to bring weather to the battlefield. October 1966. The Vietnam War is in full swing. U.S. military scientists are devising a way to slow down enemy forces using the weather. The U.S. had gone from advisor status to in-field combat status, and we're not doing well. As a result of not being able to make progress on the ground, the U.S. went to bringing the battle into the atmosphere above the battlefield. The Air Force employed a groundbreaking military directive called Project Popeye. Project Popeye was a weather modification program that involved cloud seeding, and the idea was to produce or exaggerate the monsoon rains that are traditional in that region. Popeye is literally controlling the weather. Controlling the weather. It's beyond ridiculous. How could you? Experiments are carried out beforehand with the military aircraft dropping silver iodide crystals and clouds over a strip of the Laos Panhandle, east of the Belovins Plateau in the Sikon River Valley. Experiments are carried out beforehand with the military aircraft dropping silver iodide crystals and clouds over a strip of the Laos Panhandle. 